Good evening and welcome to the third episode of Celebrating 95, an epic journey into the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. Before we go any further tonight, let me just say condolences to Lieutenant Colonel Lucius Lake on the, on, and his family on the passing of his sister Pearl. And I must say she, she was a dear friend to most of us. And I remember um, today got a lot of messages in our chat you know, just talking about her and, and the way she impacted, you know, this nice spirit on some of us. And because most cadets knew her because, you know, the lakes are really well-known people in St. Lucia. So condolences to their, their family. Um, tonight, you know, we're on a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful journey. We've, we've been here with the commandant of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, Colonel Nathan Hyacinth. We've had an opportunity to speak to the deputy commandant, Lieutenant Colonel Lake, and we have discussed the, the, the formation of the St. Louis Cadet Corps, where it, where it started, and, and the, its original purpose. We have highlighted milestones and achievements of the St. Louis Cadet Corps, and we have also explained how the organization have, have evolved over time. Tonight, we're here to discuss parental involvement and support for the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. And let me just take this opportunity to introduce my guest, Mr. Egbert Stevens, president of the Parents Support Group in the 1st Battalion, and his daughter, Cadet Sergeant Narcia Stevens. Welcome. A little bit about yourself before we continue. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Major. Um, well, my name is Egbert Stevens, um, father of four daughters, two of who are cadets, and um, I'm a retired civil servant. And I think, um, given my involvement in community work, I thought it fit into also offer my services to the Cadet Corps in assisting them as they journey forward. Sergeant, let me hear from you. Good night to all. I am Sergeant Stevens Nasia, and I'm very happy to be here to talk to everyone. Thank you for this opportunity. I thank you very much. Great stuff, great stuff. We're going to have a lot to discuss about later experiences and everything like that, both old and new. Um, the Cadet Parent Support Group, something new to me. I mean, I've been in the Cadet Corps, I can't count the years. And I knew my mom just knowing that, you know, my bags are packed and I'm out of the door. She, is, she, mm. my, she and my dad have nothing to do with cadetting. They brought me back maybe two weeks later after summer camp or over a weekend camp and, you know, they fed me <laughs> because they know I might be hungry yeah. or wash my clothes again. But now we have our parent support group and i think i first saw you all at the commandant's parade you know all decked in your t-shirts and and supporting the cadets tell me what does it involve to be part of of this um organization and you serving as president of your battalion's um group well major um to begin with um when i first started coming to the parade square with my daughters i, I felt you know like a fish out of water they didn't have any parents, there's not like nobody supporting these young people before the training actually began. So I inquired on from the battalion commander as to, you know, don't parents get involved? Don't they come there? And he said, yes, there's a parent support group, but um, we need to have rehab it revitalized. And as a result, a meeting was called and parents came and we took a decision to revitalize the group. And here I am today by their choice. Good, 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 good. And how are you? Can I, 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 I was going to give you for later, but I'm going to jump right into you. How do you feel with um, your your parents? I know they're in the background assisting, maybe with cooking, maybe with planning different events. But you know, if my if I if I'm in a parade and I in back of my day and I turn around and I see my dad, I know he's coming to collect me because something is wrong with some family member. You know, because we need to get back home. But you know, how do, how do you feel having your, your parents, you know, right there, sometimes on camp or on the parade square while you're training? It's quite nice, actually. It sometimes feels like it's a privilege because you have your parents there and some of the cadets might not. But at the same time, it also feels like you're embarrassed because you know your parents there. And if you do anything, they might be watching in the middle of your eye like, what are you doing? Right. So that's how it does feel so, at y times. Yeah, but what happens then if... Because in my day as a sergeant major, let's say, let me put me, let myself way back when I was a sergeant major, I mean, and, and I'm disciplining a cadet, and I wouldn't want their parents around. Because, you know, when I'm disciplining you, your parents might figure, hey, what are you doing to my kid? How do you feel about that if an officer is disciplining you and your father, um, let's say, 
he wants to get involved in, in that discipline in, you know, of yourself, or I, I, I am also going to talk about your sister, who is also a cadet. How do you feel about that? Well, about the parents seeing a sergeant major disciplining a cadet, well, for that, my personal opinion is you know what your child signed up for and you understand they might have done something wrong. So it's not really your place to interfere or intervene with the matter because you might not know the full story as to why your child is being disciplined by whoever is in charge of them. So if anything, like you will ask later on or when you're together one-on-one -on -one in your privacy of your own home, you'll ask what happened and then you'll go on from there. Right. With my sister being there, I can also discipline her because she's a lower rank than me. It feels quite nice knowing I could bully her. <laughs> it, feels, it feels nice. But also I could correct her when she's wrong and right. help her climb up the ranking ladder as well. Yeah. Okay, let me first say that I love the idea of parents being there. I wish my mom and dad was actually more involved in my cadet and career when I, when I, when I grew up. But, but um, don't you feel sometimes that the instructors may, who would have dropped their guard a little bit knowing that the parents are just creating some level of oversight? Just, you know, and I must say, I'm, I love the idea of the parents there, but don't you believe that maybe the standards would have been, you know, dropped a little bit if the instructors, the, the, the drill sergeant, the one doing PT on the morning, is just, he's, a, he's a free, afraid to shout because, hey, parents are... <laughs> Right there watching me. Oh, you know, do I shout very loud at, at those kids because the parents are creating some oversight? How do, you, how do you think about it? And I want to let your dad actually react to that also. <laughs> it does feel like when you're among them and the, whoever's in charge taking control, it does feel like they do drop their standards to a certain level. And like sometimes I just feel like, okay, we understand the parent is there, but we have to do what we have to do. But it just depends on how whoever's in charge react to that actually right, right right your reaction my reaction is, is, is similar to hers i mean as a parent i am it gives you an insight as to what takes place on the parade square mm -hmm. and it also gives you an opportunity to understand a bit more as to what cadeting is all about right. um for me i always encourage the parents before you 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 try to intervene do it respectfully okay. go for the ranks if it means going for the committee the, the parent support group and I could take it to the battalion commander and ask them, well, you know, a parent expressed that, that um, concern and um, what, 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 what are your response to it? Not just try to go on to the police square because you'd be very wrong for that. Right. Let me just throw a curveball out to you as president, oh. right? Well, Commandant one, eh? Colonel Harrison could call me up, let's say, he can call me up and say, hey, um, Major, I want you to run this exercise for me. The minute I land on that parade square, on that field training, I say, I want no parents there. I want them off my compound. What's your reaction as a, as, a, as a president of the Parents Association? If I, as the lead person on an activity, says I do not want parents in my sight while I, tra while I teach, while I conduct my training. Well, sir, if, you, if that command was, or, or request was come to me as, as the president there, I would leave. I would bring my concern up to, do, to the adjutant or the commander, so you know, well, sir, we felt slighted, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think it's respectful for us to sh show the respect and show the, and give good example to us, our cadets as to what it is to follow the chain of command, even if we feel that it is not right. I, I think that maybe I don't know if I was looking for that perfect answer, <laughs> but you know, it's a good message to kids out there. Yes. You need to, even when your parents speak to you, you obey. Your, your, your teachers you speak to you, you obey. If you have a complaint, let's bring it up. Stop. A little later, but it's the you know you can't just say no, I ain't, I'm not doing that. And children pick up on those kind of little things, and it's a good thing that you're saying that because yep. it show, it actually demonstrates a good level of discipline, good level of, of, of command structure. Because there are moments, well, there, there are moments, yes. I mean, and when I said activity a while ago, there are certain activities where you cannot have any civilians in the area right. when you're conducting your training. And the reason why uh, a, a commander will tell you, please be, you know, I would like you to, to, to excuse yourself. There are reasons for it, for safety reasons and stuff like that. So, so yeah, those are those are nice um, examples. Let me talk to you a little bit about your, what is the size of your of, of your grouping? Is it every child? 
has the right to have a, 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 the, the parent involved, or is just a few of y'all, or it's just... No, well, actually, the, the parent support group in itself is open to all parents of cadets. Mm -hmm. um, we have an executive group, which right. is a, a sub of that, which is about 9 to 11 of us. And then we have a subgroup for which does sponsorship. Okay. But generally, um, all we we try to encourage all parents to be part of the cadet parent group. Okay. But then we have the structure where we have executive. So do you all have elections of you know? Do you have a body where once a year you have elections to decide who's president, who's who's treasurer, who's secretary, or you all just volunteer and say, hey, I want to be the president and I want to be the secretary? Well, when the group started last year. Um, those persons who showed interest, mm -hmm. they came forward and um, from that group we met privately with the battalion commander and persons indicated their interest. Okay. Right. So just and tell me a little bit about the various things. I know y'all, the last time I saw y'all, I think I saw some of y'all in the kitchen area helping out. What are the different things, a while ago you mentioned sponsorship and yes. stuff like that. What are the various things that you do? And what are the things you are allowed to do? Mm -hmm. You know, how far do you encroach on the administration of, of, of cadetting? Just talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Um, well, when the, the group came to be, we realized that, um, that the executive of, of the core needed support in certain activities, especially in um, sponsorship and, and doing other, other things un, not directly related to cadetting. So we came on board to assist. Um, for instance, um, when we came on board, there was talk of having a dinner for the, for the cadet corps, the first mm -hmm. battalion, and we realized that the executive did not have the time or manpower to really take this on, so we decided to assist and said, look, we will put our backs to the wheel and get it done, and it was executed. Um, we don't take part in the parade square cadeting or anything like that. Well, I wouldn't say you don't. I say you can't. Well. <laughs> we don't, we can't, um, but we do come there to make sure and we try and encourage the train to be on the compound by the, by the, on time and some, most sometimes we always try to see that they leave on time also and they take the bus to go down. We try to, you know, just make sure that persons are safe. Yeah. How, do you all have an orientation process? Because they are, and I'm going back in time and just, I mean, for instance, sometimes when I would be a camp commandant, and let's say the school cleaner, by chance, not knowing that there's a camp, would walk across that parade square. And my sergeant major catch that civilian walking around. That's just something he, he or she would just take on their own and say, hey, you know, get out. <laughs> you know, what are you doing there? Who are you? And so is there an orientation process where parents are told what they can, what they cannot do, how they can or cannot encroach on, on cadet um, life itself? Well, when we, when we became the executive, we did have an orientation with the adjutant and the executive of the, the corps, the lieutenant colonel, the colonel. Mm -hmm. um, we have not had the opportunity to really have a session with the parents themselves. Mm -hmm. We did try once, but um, the meeting there was not properly, um, not enough persons came, so we have, have pushed it back to, but then generally we, we do, if, and even in, in the, the, the parents' WhatsApp group, we do, um, share information as to some persons may ask questions as to things that happen mm -hmm. and we try to share information from the right persons. Good, good, good. The talent commander or the, or the colonel or the adjutant as to the responses. Right. While I prepare in my head a few questions for you, I just want our, our technician to put up a photograph of some kids, I think they, they're wearing a blue uniform. Um, I want to ask you a, a couple of questions. That photograph there, um, Sarge, what, what's happening there? Okay, in that photograph, we were, that's the group that was going to Jamaica for our Caribbean cadet camp. So that's us at the airport, VG airport. So that's our photo. Caribbean cadet camp, what is that? Caribbean cadet camp. Tell, tell our audience what, 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 what makes up the Caribbean cadet camp. The Caribbean cadet camp is like a group of cadets from each um, island mm -hmm. in the Caribbean, such as Jamaica, Trinidad, St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, and so on. There is a total to 11 to 12 contingencies in each group mm -hmm. from each island, and they come together to the host island, so which 
whatever island that hosts in the camp, they go to the island and so on. Now quickly in that photograph, I'm seeing two other persons in a lighter blue. Who are those persons and what are they for? These two are actually our officers for our camp. On the left you have Captain Alfred mm -hmm. and on the right we have Lieutenant Williams. Right. So on a contingent chart you have boys and girls so you must have a female officer and you must have a male officer. Yes. Right. Good. I just wanted to let our audience know that those things are uh, good for when parents are choosing to send the cadets to join the cadets because they know that all those due diligence are actually met. Thanks for that photo photograph. Now you're, you're a sergeant. Right? Um, Tell us a little bit about your, your role as a sergeant on a normal Saturday or a normal school day. The role of a sergeant, for my personal opinion, is you have to take care of the men that's beneath you. Mm -hmm. Any issue or any problem, activity, it must, it needs to be come up to you or run by you, regardless or whatever. And even when it grows up to us, we have to set it up so it to be approved and for us to carry on. With us taking care of the people, the men below us, we the have men and women. And let's not let's not offend any of those ladies. I know that are almost fifty percent right now or more in the in the cadet corps. <laughs> yes, yes, my bad. Both men and women, male and female, mm -hmm. we do take care of them on a whole. Any issues that may come up, we have to find out a solution to fix the problem. Any like problems, we have to find out how to deal with it and how to discipline what the person or persons that's involved with the issue. So we keep everybody in check whilst keeping count of our men. Good. So we don't lose or leave anyone behind whilst we move on with any activity. As a sergeant, you're in charge of a section, you're on a nice um, walk, you know. Maybe you're doing your, your security thing or you just go for an afternoon walk, somebody collapses, fall sick. What's, what's your role in, in, in that instance? Our role is to make sure the person has, like, make sure they're still breathing or responsive. If not, we have to carry on our various um, roles as we have learned during our first aid mm -hmm. classes. We have, we have taken first aid classes for us to carry on for any mishap that may happen during right, our right, right. activities. So, with that, we have to take care of our men, and as we take care of our men, we also send information to those above us mm -hmm. to let them know of the situation that has occurred. Right, right. As a sergeant myself, because I, I, I did go through the ranks, when I was a sergeant, I think I had maybe two awards already for shooting. And shooting is an exciting thing, a lot of people love it. What about you? How, how have you, what's your, what's your career path when it comes to your, your marksmanship and stuff like that? With my marksmanship, I did go to, well, as you saw, in the Caribbean Cadet Camp, we did have a match and shoot. Mm -hmm. I got an award. I also earned the nickname of Sniper. With that, the reason I really, really care about my marksmanship is that I really want to go into the Air Force. Okay. So with the Air Force, I need to get my marksmanship in check. So I will be like... At least a bit qualified for me to go. You might have an issue with the commission of police, you know. She wants her men and women in St. Lucia as opposed <laughs> to going and join the Air Force. <laughs> you know, so you gotta be careful there. But that's nice. It's, it's, it's a nice, I must admit, it's a nice career path. And, you know, you being a, a female, of course, let me just go into that. But way back, we had the, the when the cadet course started in, in St. Lucia, it was just pure male. And we're seeing an almost shift to a more female dominant. Um, cadet corps. Do you see yourself, you know, carrying the title of commandant somewhere in the future? Or your sister who's a corporal, you know, going up that, that ladder being a commandant, the first female commandant of the Sanusha Cadet Corps? Hmm. If I show the characteristics or I show like I have the capability to carry on that title, I'll take it with no complaint, no issues. But for my personal experience. Let me stop you for a while. The commandant is watching. So you, you, you're watching the man's job there. So I'm just telling you, <laughs> be very careful how you finish answering that question, right? I just want to know. Very no shade. But just for uh, my personal opinion, I will not really carry that title for my personal. Why? You don't like, you don't, you, you don't, you don't want to be the commandant of the Sanusha Cadet Commandant? It's not like I don't want to. I just 
don't see myself carrying the title mm -hmm. because yeah most times i will find my way falling short don't right. get me wrong we do make mistakes but i don't see myself carrying the title okay let me let me talk to your dad a little bit about mm -hmm. something strange really um what what gives you sleepless nights when your daughters are out at camp well funny enough, do you um, have any <laughs> major I, I i have no sleepless nights okay um I think my daughters and I, we have a very open conversation about cadeting, um, the issues that they, 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 they have any. And you know, I always encourage them to always speak to the senior officers and make sure they clarify whatever concerns they have. And given the, the way they are brought up, I don't think I have any concerns they being out. And that speaks about good parenting. Yes. You know, I have, I have a seven-year-old myself, and you know, I, I, I try to insist that she tells me everything you know, and, and you know everything that happens, so that I, I can guide, yes. and both myself and her mom would guide her, you know, collectively, and and, and that is good. So, so there's no sleep. So that's good. And and those, um, just I want to speak directly to our audience. There, the parents who have not made that decision, and students who have not made that decision, you know, to join the Saint Lucia Cadet Corps and any Cadet Corps in the Caribbean. It is a good organization. It's a good organization that molds the young boys, young minds, young girls, you know, into a more disciplined life. A more protective life and one that is career driven because being a member of the cadet corps your your career paths you know the army um the the, the police force but not forgetting the, the, a fireman or firewoman not forgetting a prime minister a minister because i as i always say we have a lot of those in st lucia you know people who have gone through the cadet corps and just in a while we're going to be playing a few um messages from from some of those cadets who have those students who have served as members of the cadet corps and you know just look where they are today but before we do so um back to parenting and not just parenting but i know you serve with myself and mr lake and all of us on the 95th anniversary committee and I know we're just what two months away. Two months. Perfect. Two months away. Any activity that, that that you're interested in that you're going to put all the energy in to make sure we celebrate this big nine to five with a bang? Well, I think I would like to put all my energy in all the activities, mm -hmm. um, if I'm um, given the opportunity. But I'm interested to see the the for for one of the activities I'm interested in seeing because I'm just miss meeting some of the old cadets, the awards awards night. Awards night. That's at gov. That, well, I can't say where it is yet, yeah. but I know we're trying to have it at yes. government house. Yes. Right. And and you have a nice special relationship with God, with, with His Excellency. Well, His Excellency, I go back way back to St Mary's College. His, right. His sons went to school there. We went. We, I met him there. Yeah. And my first job at Inland Revenue, he was one of the senior officers there yeah. also. So you know, we goes back a long way. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, he has a special relationship with with, with us and the Cadet Corps. I've not seen, let's say. Too many persons. He's, he's our commander in chief, and he does, you know, pay attention to <laughs> cadet and your relationship and how you feel about that, and then going forward, how we can, you know, get that bond a little closer. Well, I, I, I'm very pleased with the relationship, and I'm happy that even the government is, um, I mean, seeing the need to even furnish us with a new new headquarters and seeing that the cadet corps is important in molding our young people mm -hmm. into good model citizens going forward so yes um, I know he's always at um, our activities and he's gives us a lot of support and uh, that I hope will continue with any governor general we have. Are there major discussions between and I, sorry if I go from side to side mm -hmm. any I know you are the president of the parents group in first battalion, first battalion. and you are the second battalion yes do you all have the synergy where you all discuss things with the other battalion, the parents in the other battalion, and come up with ideas collectively? Do you all share your thoughts on, on the way parents can assist the cadets better? Well, we have not gone the full mile on this. Mm -hmm. Coming out of the commandant's parade earlier this year, we did meet up with the parents from, this, from the second battalion, and I mean, we were pleased that we were able to when we did prepare the meals, refreshments after that battalion, it was for all cadets, it wasn't just for the first battalion. Yeah. And we were happy that, you know, we, all of us could have partake. And we have made um, some contact with them, 
to make plans moving forward. So with the other activities coming, we're hoping that we will have joint activities going forward. I know we, 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 we had had at least one conversation on the, on the summer camp to come, but that has not been finalized as yet. Okay. Um, Sarge. Yes. Your baby sister. Yep. I'm not offending her by calling her baby, baby. sister. <laughs> She's, she's going to tear baby. me up when she sees me. But yeah, she's a couple, right? <laughs> Lance couple. Lance couple. What's that relationship like? The relationship, well... They all quarrel for who, who's using the iron first because I don't want to be late and, you know, stuff. And, you know, I can't see my nugget and because you use it and stuff like that. Oh, no. Our conflict doesn't be about that. Our conflict does be around who getting what snacks <laughs> at camp. <laughs> That's what it does basically be about. Sometimes I might just come and take what I want and leave. Oh, when I feel nice enough, I'll give her some of mine. So that's what <laughs> basically it's about. Okay. Nothing like we don't disrespect each other's authority. Only like when we in the, like for having one on one or when we have our free times during camp, we just talk to each other, have conversations. That's it. When we on the per square, strictly respect both ways. Let me ask you a question that I'm just trying to create a shift between when I was a cadet and, and now. Um, cell phones has, have, have affected even the household, you know, schools, the workplace. Just the phone is just a disturbance, in my opinion. I'm trying to discipline myself to, you know, leave it alone for about half an hour sometimes when I do things. When I go for a walk, I don't want it because it's really a disturbance. In my day as a cadet, I am not like four, five and cell phone, right? But now, how does that work with you all on camp? Is there a is there a system when you report to camp you have to put your phone, let's say, in a locker or you cannot use it? Or is it just a, everybody can use their phone only when they're not in the parade square? I'm, I must admit I'm not, I'm, I'm an open book and I remember, remember seeing a cadet in uniform with his cell phone in his back pocket. And if I was the, uh, an officer nearby, you know, now back in the day that phone is no more. <laughs> You know, you just take that phone, you, you, you walk over it as if, you know, you saw some piece of paper. But how, how, how do you all deal with things like cell phones that cause a major disturbance? With the cell phones at camp, we do, everybody has their cell phones. Mm -hmm. But whenever, like, there's discipline or somebody, they, the cadets do complain to their parents with the phone. So, mm -hmm. as an act of discipline or to combat the issue, they collect everyone's phones. After a certain time, after the end, well, at the end of camp, they just give the phone back. With that, personally speaking, I don't see the necessary of having a phone on camp for mm -hmm. you to complain. You know what you came to do, you know what will happen if you do something wrong. So, if you know what happened, why would you do it in the first place? Uh -huh. If you know they have consequences to your action, why would you do it? It doesn't really make sense to me. That's just my opinion. I must ask the commander to give me to give me um, a, a task one of those days, you know, so I can come back and bring some of the old school stuff. <laughs> I think it might scale, but we might laugh about it a little bit. At this point in time, we want um, everybody out there, if, you, if you're viewing us, please share this link because we really want to share the good news with everybody in the diaspora, all parents and everybody. But right now, I want to take in... We, we're going to open the lines in a while because we, we have a few minutes left on the show and we don't really interact too much with our... Our audience so we're going to open the line so you can call and ask my guests any question you want we have a question for you a little later but right now i want us to listen to messages from ex-cadets all over some of us who have left st lucia um if they if, if we can show those right now hi everyone sonia polius here today i wanted to talk to you a bit about my time in the st lucia army cadet corps it wasn't just any experience let me tell you those were some of the most fun years of my life. Being a cadet wasn't just about drills and exercises. It was about the people. I met so many amazing people, not just from St. Lucia, but from other countries as well. Thanks to all the camps we went on. We shared some incredible experiences together. But the cadet corps gave me the, more than just friendships. It seriously shaped who I am today. And let me tell you about the few things that I learned. The early bird gets the worm. Remember those 5 a.m. PT sessions? Yeah, those weren't easy, but they were definitely great for me and they taught me the value of waking up early and getting a head start on the day. It's a habit I still hold on to today and it's been a big help. 
The second one, teaming up is key. The core wasn't all about competition. Even though we did push each other to be our best, it was also about teamwork, especially during those crazy survival training sessions. We had to rely on each other, support each other to make it through. That lesson in teamwork has stuck with me and it's something I use every day, whether it is working on a project or just helping out a friend. And lastly, grit. I consider this to be my superpower. Let's be honest, the cadet corps wasn't always a walk in the park. There were some seriously tough physical challenges. But you know what? We pushed through them together. We learned grit, that determination to keep going even when things get hard. And that's a skill that comes in handy more times than I can count in my life. But beyond the skills and experiences, the cadet corps gave me something truly special, lifelong friendships. The people I met there are like family to me. Looking back, I can honestly say it was one of the best experiences I had growing up. It helped me grow as a person, and I'm so grateful for the time I spent there. Good evening, everyone. The distinguished pleasure is mine to share in the 95th year of celebrations of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. As some of you would recognize, my name is Tracelyn Compton. And I am here just to say how much of an impact being a member of the Cadet Corps at the Mikud Secondary School had on my life. It literally changed the tra trajectory of my life. My outlook on life was completely changed because of the discipline that I was exposed to, the chance at um, leadership, honing those skills. And today I am very thankful for that impact and input in my life at such an early stage through the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. So to all those who participated and all those who helped mold us in those formative years, I say thank you to the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, those members who served then and who, those who continue to serve now. I encourage those who have taken on that mantle in recent years to continue doing so because I am a testimony of the positive influence that being in the St. Lucia Cadet Corps can actually have on the life of a person. It has come full circle for me. I too now do that same sort of work in a different jurisdiction. And so as you celebrate your 95th anniversary, my heart goes out to you in, you know, celebration to just say, Thank you and continue the hard work. Happy 95th St. Lucia Cadet Corps. Thank you. My name is Susie Hall Fontaine and I became a cadet in the early 80s at the then Entrepot Junior Secondary School. The school became a senior secondary school while I was there. When I told my parents that I wanted to become a cadet, they were all for it. My brother was a cadet, so it was easy for them to make that decision. Girls in castries at the time, it was was not a thing that they did. You didn't see many girls as cadets. So I felt I was pretty much one of the pioneers in castries at the time. And it is something that I do not regret. I still have many of the friends that were my friends as cadets today. We still look at each other as brothers and sisters in the Corps. And I would recommend this to any young person who f who's looking for something different, who's looking for something more especially at schools. I am Dance Corporal Steven Jude. I attend the Entropo Secondary School. I joined with cadets because I wanted to have more experiences in life. I joined with cadets because I learned safety skills in life and be self-dependent. One of the who, you know, on the screen? Yes, I do, Major. The last one, Lance Corporal Stevens. That's your sister. Yes, she yes. <laughs> yeah. Going forward, as I to spoke to um, Lieutenant Kirk during his show, is that we're going to really put up a little wall of fame, you know, or wall of participation, because there's a lot of people trees and you would pass and say good morning to and stuff like that. And they were actually <coughs> cadets. And you know, and, and their cadets have changed their lives. So it's, you know, you, we need to get to know those people. You know, I was just having a conversation with um, 
sent a message to Dr. Anthony, Prime Minister, and he's going to have a nice little interview with us sometime sharing his experience with the cadet corps, you know, because he was a cadet. And it's, it's good for us to know who our brothers and sisters are out there. And I don't know if you listen to Sonia Polius, one of the cadets under my command. I mean, Sonia was just, you know, esprit de corps. You know, and, and what she's saying there is the cadetting actually made her who she is today. Mm -hmm. And most of us, I mean, most of us, you think it's just, you know, it's just a thing, huh? But as Commander Lake said the last time, this is a career. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a way of life because yeah. you, mold, you mold the young people into, into being assertive to take command of the, of, 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 of the surroundings of their life. And I think that's important for, yeah. for young people growing if up. If you come to my home now, in a certain area, you're going to see my sword, you're going to see my uniform pressed and hung there, my boots. And people know when they enter that that's a cadet's house. You understand? So, so those kind of things, it does um, mold us. The cadet court just um, launched the sea cadets some time ago. you have any aspirations as joining the sea cadets or how do you, you know? Well, I don't intend to join the sea cadets. Reason being, I am terrified of water. I am afraid I might drown, so I'm not the water. Mm -hmm. My comrades has joined it. I support them fully, but I will not join. What happened if the, the, the adjutant you know, on the advice of the training department, does say that to be a cadet going forward, from every every six months, you have to switch, you know, because to be a full, let's say, sergeant or to or, or to move up the ranks, you must have an experience in every subunit of, of, of the organization. Does that would that deter you from continuing? Well, in that instance, just have to suck it. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Um, we have a question for our audience because we, ha we have a few minutes left. I think about 10 minutes left on the show. We're going to put up a photograph of, you know, a very old photograph. And there's a gentleman that is... One body. We want to know who that individual is. And the we walks home with... Um, Mustard Tactical Duffer Bag, sponsored by Active Gear Limited. You will in the photo. You can put it a little while while we speak. This is a group of authors, and if you can just bring it bring it to the other photograph for a while. Could somewhere in Barbados, and I can see Brigadier Lewis. The photograph, right? And I can see Major Eudoxy, one of our commandants. But who is that? You can call now and call me over your concerns. If you don't have questions for the parents and our sergeant or myself, do feel free. But we want to call. I acted. Ted. And we have. Go ahead, caller. Yes. Good, good. Yes. Good night to you. Yes. 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 Leon Hess, warrant officer at the time, was W. S. Would be, I am better than the police, the man. Our arms on parade, oh, the, the parade. Our height selection, forming height selection, must be to a T. When, when you say ice bright, the head snaps. The beret was ironed down constantly with water to strike a pose. Yes, it was, it was a, a thing of, hey, I'm ready. Look at me, I am neat, I am clean. My food call. We have to, in, in, in this back to a certain extent, to all our areas of community. 
within the organization. The uniform is you. As a cadet, um, unfortunately, I did not get to go to summer camps because my mother at the time felt it best to get me out to my father. So I never got a chance to uh, out, let's say, uh, go up in the ranking. But I have many friends um, who are still uh, a good friend of Wells and the list goes on. The gentlemen who work in the border, I can go on and on. Um, you know, the Galloways, the gentleman um, um, who just passed away in St. Vincent, um, I, I just forgot his name there for a minute, just flash across the air. What's going to be in your thing, you know? Um, I'm going to what was simulated mock battles. Yes, <laughs> late being there. Yes. You had Chung, Shorty, you know, was there. I mean, the list goes on. Um, the camp, it, 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 it is something that the youngsters of today need to understand where cadetting, the discipline of cadetting. The issues we have with the young men and women or of the institution, which is known as the Boys Training Center, I have been an advocate for that place to become a, an institution that is managed and placed in the controls of the cadet corps. Because it is my honest belief that you do that, you not only give cadetting a responsibility direct to society, and not only when there's a disaster to be at Nemo and we're doing our part, but to make a constant change in the daily lives of young men who have gone astray Right, not sending them to the prisons because there's no space for them. But we have enough cadets to turn over and have our night security. We have enough cadets to wake them up early and line them up. We have enough cadets to drill into them what a boot camp is about. Yes, to yes. change their lives. And when I look at this facility and I see the garden grounds they have, they've built so much and spent so much money that's underutilized. And we have so many young people in cadetting that I am certain would be more than happy, and even those that have moved on out of school would be more than happy to give back yeah. to a, to the community by your, serving your, within such an Your contribution is way on point, and I love it, but yeah. we only have a few minutes left, huh? so I you, you can wrap up, yeah. I will speak to you again when we meet on our working grounds. So no, no problem. Thanks a lot for your contribution. Don't forget, um, cadets, if that photograph can come up there again quickly. We are looking for the answer to this question, who is the gentleman in that photograph? And you will win yourself a wonderful um, duffel bag, you know, camping duffel bag. So, hey, um, if we have any more calls coming in quickly, because we only have, let's say, four minutes um, till we end our show. <coughs> um, so... Why are we waiting? Oh, yeah, we have a call. Go ahead. Yeah, good night. Is that um, Mr. Mitchell or Mario? Um, what's his rank? And give me some, give me some full details. <laughs> Caller? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what his rank is, but I can make up that bit, that bit Kelly. Give me that full name again. Mario Mitchell. Rump. No, that... Mario Mitchell. Mario Michel, yes, he's, he's our retired... Romeo, Romeo Michel, Romeo Michel, yeah. He's the retired adjutant of the St. Lucia Cadet Corps, and you're correct. And you are correct. I hope you're a cadet, huh? Because I want a cadet to win this bag, right? <laughs> but yes, you are the winner. We're going to take your, your number um, offline, if you don't mind. Um, or, um, so Mr. Sirius, Mr. Sirius, Mr. Sebastian. No, that's Cyril Saltibus, actually. Mr. Cyril Saltibus? Yes. Mr. Saltibus? Yes. Mr. Saltibus? Mr. Saltibus? That's educator. He just hold my price for me. That was my classmate. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, educator. <laughs> All right. I wish you luck in the, with the Calypso season. Thanks for you. i great that you're listening. That means everybody is. And yes, I will collect your price for you even tomorrow. Yes. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. So, I think we had a wonderful evening. 
um, you get to open up a little bit. I mean, when I, when I first met you, you were a little um, edgy and, and didn't want to even speak too much. And I, I think we, we've opened up a, a new um, gateway here a couple of years ago, as you all said, for, for, parent, for parents to be a support, support group. The Cadet Corps do need um, many other support groups coming on board. I'm happy that His Excellency, the Governor General, Mr. Errol Charles, is on board with us, that our Minister of Education, um, Honorable Sean Edward is on board with us. Yes. That the government have given us a new headquarter, uh, not a, a new, but a headquarters head grounds, head and I think it's going to be new in a while, right. in, in, in a short in a short space of time. And I think the parents coming on board and 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 with us celebrating 95 and spreading the good word of cadet and going forward, I think it's going to be just a good, you know, couple more years to come with the St. Lucia Cadet Corps. We need to wrap up and I want to hear from you first. What are, what's a message for young girls and boys out there as you see them, t you know, having a choice into which organization or what path to take in life? Up to you. With whatever choice you come up with, you need to stick to it because you made that choice, you make a commitment. Not to start and then for it to be like, mm, I don't really want to join it again because it's too hard. You made the commitment, stick to it. Later on you'll find it, you'll look back and you'll be like, wow, look at the old days, watch me now. So, if you make a decision, stick to it. You might find it good in the long run. Thank you very much. And for, for you, sir, message to other parents out there. Um, encouraging them to, to, to be part of, of the, the, the parent support group of their schools and even a message to the youngsters out there. Let me hear your closing Well, I, I would like to, to encourage parents who have students, who have children in the credit court to be part of the parent support group. There's a lot that can be done. It's not just about the fundraising. Um, we want parents to come on, 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 on at the Paris Square to witness and something to give to give encouragement to the officers in what they do to support because you know we have a lot more females in the in the cadet corps now we need some more mothers or aunts or sisters to come to help with with um, these these um, situations and also to look at um, other ways that we could assist the corps in helping in grooming our children to be the next men and women of Saint Lucia. Thank you very much for being my guests this evening. St. Lucia, our friends in the diaspora, cadets out there. Thanks again. Next week we're going to have an exciting show. I don't know who my guest is going to be yet because there are so many of them. It might be one of our past commandants. It might be the ex-prime minister of St. Lucia. But most definitely we're going to have another great show next Wednesday at 8.30. I'm going to leave you with this parting words. If you want to make a choice because you want this trajectory in your life to be one of success, the St. Lucia Cadet Corps is a place to be. And when you enroll your, your, your kids into the secondary school and they want to have that choice of an extracurricular activity, the St. Lucia or one of the best organizations that you can actually have them sign up to. So I want to the fact that we celebrating 9 to 5. You're going to see some cadets walking around with a little sponsorship with a little five dollar markings on it circle a few of them support them because we want uh, we want to send them to the summer camp this year in so which is going to be a big camp where we're going to have a huge parade celebrating now I leave you with just those few words if you're looking for a choice to for you for your kids to mold themselves into better men and women the saint lucia cadet corps is the place to be thank you for joining us until next week to your social media platforms seamlessly and simultaneously look no further live streaming